And I remember those, you know, in the feds when I did have that beef with the um, with the kid from DC, they all showed up in the yard. Every every you know Spanish, black, it didn't matter. They all showed up. All the Boston guys rode together. You know, wow. you know, and uh, that's something that like that was a pretty. You know, when I heard yeah. that in the hole, I'm like, that's Damn, a pretty bro. cool. Thing. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host Bobby, I got a special guest with me today. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell the people your name, where you're from, and a little about yourself. What's up guys, my name's Joe Lawler. I'm from Charlestown, born and raised. I'm a fan of the podcast and uh, you know, I related to a lot of what the guys were saying on there. Talk a little bit about Charlestown growing up. So I wouldn't change it for the world, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think there was a a quote in like the movie The Town, it said like it it literally ruined my life, but I wouldn't change anything, you know? And it's fun, there was kids on every corner. It was a community, there was a loyalty, there was, you know, a code of of conduct, fell in line and it started at home, you know, even even with your parents, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, they say like knock around people, you know, they can be citizens. My father was a firefighter, my mother, you know, she held down the fort or whatnot. Two older sisters started off in the projects and then moved into a house and like, like I always say, I never needed for nothing, you know, I may have wanted, yeah. but never needed for nothing. And, and as far as I was concerned, when I compared, you know, they talk about comparison, identify, don't compare. And uh, yeah. I learned that later on in life. My friends had no dads and stuff. And it was just, you know, I, I thought I was doing better than them. But right. at the same time, I wasn't about to show them up or anything. You know, I was uh, actually settle for less stupid, right? You yeah. know, I couldn't, couldn't wait to get to where they were and uh, they probably couldn't wait to get out of their uh, situation. So was incarceration a thing in your family? Well, that's the thing. And that's, you know, they talk about productive environment and uh, my family, you know, I was raised raised properly. Talk, you see like broken homes and mm-hmm. dysfunction and all that. And like, it, it makes sense. And alcohol was a thing, but mm-hmm. it was accepted, created a lot of chaos. And like I said, it was what, it was the normal. It wasn't um, leading to anybody and getting, it was getting arrested? Of, no, not at all. You know, it was just a lot of uh, what goes on this house stays in this house. You know, as a kid, it's like you sponge up everything and you, and you take it all in and, and you hear something like that that's pretty deep but it was never elaborated on so now you just kept your mouth shut and so talk yeah, about uh, school my parents did everything they could for me sent me to good schools catholic schools i played hockey played sports ca- cross that threshold as a teenager go from sports to courts my buddy says it all the time you know you know he wanted to be bobby or and then um, overnight i want to be gangster and i love when he talks like that because to me it humbles me and, it, and it, i love hearing that stuff because like that that to me is like you know, they talk all that word, all that terminology and stuff like that. It's like, if you, you know, number one, don't take yourself too serious. You know what I mean? What I've realized, I saw one of the guys on the podcast and he, and he said, like, what's 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 gangster is taking care of your family, showing up for life. And like, I didn't I didn't get that memo for yeah. a long time. My mother could have been Mother Teresa. My father could have been the Pope. And once I went down the corner at, you know, 15, 16 years old, I was going to be whatever I thought you would accept me as. And, mm. and that's the truth. And, and it wasn't until I started saying things like that. And my head will tell me one like that, like what I say is going to matter or or that, you know, people are going to have opinions on that. And that's, that's really, that's, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? Because I'm not that important that anyone's really thinking. Well, most people are so self-centered anyway that it's not even like that. Of course, right. You know, and just so. And so, and the truth is like, you know, that, that, and that was the truth. So it was for me to realize and for me to, for me to understand, but, um, you know, I banged my head along the way and I, I suffered the consequences, uh, you know, 16 or whatever, like, you know, you talked about being fun and everything and. You know, I, I feel like now, you know, with the drug scene and stuff like that, it's uh, it's like terrorist shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's 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 scary. Uh, what was Charles sound like when the Oxycontins came around? So I remember. So I went. I was the first person to go away and uh, for the Oxycontin. And uh, I went away in 2000. They, they had started a task force, and you know, and, and we didn't know what we were getting. I mean, at that at that point in 2000, like I say. It was it was still a fad. It mm-hmm. wasn't an epidemic. People weren't dying. People weren't sick. All these things, you know. I, when I went away in 2000, it was almost like uh, probably a godsend, you know. Yeah. When, when I think about it, you know, like I said, I thought I was Al Capone. I found out I was alcoholic later in life. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I would have loved to believe all these things because I needed to in order to like, you know, play that character, play that role or whatever, you know, that uh, protected me or I thought did. You know, when I went away, I went away at 21. They gave me 111 months. How's that? Just talk about the arrest. The Oxycontin, you know, like I said, it was still a fad at that point. When I went away, I heard horror stories. You know, I have two older sisters. The worst things that I'd hear that would make me cringe and yeah. turn my stomach is the girls I grew up with. And, you know, as a guy, we're taught, like, you know, man up. And, yeah. you know, I think, you know, it's harder for a girl with that guilt and shame and some of the things, you know, and there's a lot of people that take advantage of that. But, uh, some oh, girls yeah. are mothers, and that's a whole different dynamic, yeah, too. Yeah, it's, so. it's just poison, you know what I mean? And uh, it was supply and demand at the time, and, and there wasn't a... You know, I had I had one guy, and, and, and he could only get so much, and, and it was just so mm-hmm. lucrative at the right. time, you know. And I'm young, and I'm and I'm I'm greedy, and I'm 
and I'm driving Lexuses and, and, and you know, feeling, uh, thought I was that important, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> you find out quickly that that's, you know, on to the next one, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like I said, they gave, they smoked me. They gave me, they gave me um, you know, 111 months. You know, I think it's funny because with the feds, you know, they go by the guidelines and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember paying my lawyer like 50000 and uh you know, and, and basically to go in and like, you know, get me the low end of the guidelines. Yeah. Are you fighting this from the street? My family did probably the best thing they could have done, you know. Um, I think I was on a mission, you know. I, I never I never robbed anything. That was the thing too where like I, I created this character or whatever and uh you know, lied to myself, but I, I never I never did anything. I never was under the influence when I did anything, you know. Mm-hmm. So I consider myself, you know, a stick up kid and all this stuff and like, you know, after I'd celebrate or whatever, but I never even with the pills, you know, was I just I'd I'd get them and I'd flip them and uh and it wasn't until Probably, you know, a few years into my bid, um, I was in Allenwood in the feds and um, they were passing the news. The, the Boston guys were passing the uh, the Boston Herald around. Mm-hmm. So it got to me and uh, there was a kid, kid from Charlestown. He was on like, I think uh, a couple pages in, but there was a, you know, it showed him on the front page and he had um, overdosed and uh, died. And uh, the girlfriend was in a coma and she came out of it and I guess they mixed um the Oxycontin with benzos or whatever it was, and mm-hmm. no one knew anything about that. But that was the first time I tell you when when that when I saw that and and I felt guilt for the first time. You know what I mean? Right. I felt like even though you know indirect, you know, it had nothing to do with me. But at the same time, like I would never, I wasn't raised to like I wouldn't sell. You know, in my head, I wouldn't sell heroin growing up, right? Oh, that's right. who does that? You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. a shit bag move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that was I started so, my started my bid. It's at twenty one. You know, and so uh, let's just a, talk. Do they um. Do they raid your house? Like, how does it go down? I was working with a phone company, and uh, and um, I remember a couple, com- a couple of feds came by my house, and uh, I used to have a drop ceiling, you know. And and my mother used to, she was a snooper, you know what I mean. <laughs> and the one thing she always did, I thought it was, the, I, I thought it was the best thing when I was a kid, but she always told me, "Get this shit out of my house," right? She never flushed it, she never yeah. did anything, and I was like, "All right, solid, right?" <laughs> I remember they they showed up at the um at the house. I was probably like eighteen, and I was working for the phone company, working nights, and my mother come upstairs and she called Joseph right so I know something serious and uh I'm half asleep she kicks the bed she says get up and I, and I, I think I'm dreaming she says I said what she said the FBI's at the door and I said what and she said the the FBI's at the fucking door <laughs> and I said well do they have a warrant she says I don't know you go ask them <laughs> so I go downstairs and you know good cop bad cop and uh they said oh we can take them by ourselves or whatever and at that point I'm like the the lesser of two evils right like the cat's out of the bag. My parents, right? Like, yeah. I feel safer, like, with them knowing whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Nope, they're going to stay right here. So I remember sitting at the kitchen table, and uh, and, and, and they were asking, you know, pulling out pictures, you know, this one, that one. And, you know, they didn't let, you know, I said, oh, they're acquaintance, acquaintance. I said, you already know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, got yeah, the pictures, yeah, right? right? Yeah, I said, no, I'm, I got a girlfriend, you know. I'm not, uh, no friends or whatever, you know. And they were fishing or whatever. And at the time, I had, I had, um, I had made some money and, and and I went out and got a truck. I was I was young. I was stupid and uh and it was a little flashy. And I remember I kept it from my mother for a couple of weeks. And I'd I'd park it on like the side street. And <laughs> one day she see me drive and I had the music bumping. There was the summertime. She was taking a walk and <laughs> she came over. She says, "Who's caused this?" And I lied to her or whatever. And then. I couldn't keep it no more. But one day I just walked in. I said, "All right, it's my it's my car or whatever." And went on from there. You know, and and they, there was no stopping me. You know what I mean? Um, but now you know the feds are on you. What are you thinking, though, like in, in your mind? Are you st- well, at the time, I think I, w- I was in probably, I was delusional, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was young. I, w- I thought I was untouchable. And uh, at the end of the day, it was probably like a, a, a movie, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it was like a game, you know, cat and mouth. The one thing I learned about the feds is that the feds don't step in until they're, um, you know, when, when the feds step in, you got problems. If you take them to trial, right, God bless you, you know what I mean? If you And, and, and you lose, you, you, yeah. you're done. I got 10 and I thought that was harsh, you know. I'd, ne- I'd never been to prison. The sentencing, they, they was saying that they could have gave me like 25 to 30 and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm not that bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> How much did you eventually get caught with it? I was driving to New Hampshire. There was a party at uh, University of Maine. I had my cut. I had about 5,000 Oxycontin, you know, mm. and um, I had a gun. And uh, I had a pistol. I had a 9 millimeter under the seat. And I had the trash bag full of ding- full of stuff that nowadays you could probably make a mint off, you know. But we were just we just yeah. wanted the Oxycontin. And uh, that was that was the fad. I mean, that was what we're selling. And, uh, yeah, my buddy called me. He said, you hold? And I said, always. He said, all right, well, there's a big party tonight, so. My plan was to drive up there, and uh, I got to New Hampshire, and uh, there was a couple stadies, and I just I took my chances. I said, you know, let me pull over, and when I pulled over, he said, step out, and 
you know, then the old inventory searches, you mm -hmm. know, but he's, he was, he was snooping and stuff. And, but I tell you what, once he, threw, once he cuffed me and stuff, uh, like a sigh of relief, I don't know, something, yeah. something came off my shoulders and I just said, all right, it's over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think back and I'm like, man, like for, for those, like, you know, let's say 16 to, to, to 21, it's like five years of like, was there some fun time? Sure. But like a lot of madness, chaos, uh, five years cost me 10, you know, five mm -hmm. years of, and, and so that was like, that's, that's, it was just, it was so madness. So how does it, it work crazy. with the New Hampshire state police getting you and then the feds getting involved? So, Obviously they're already kind of watching. So 924C means that control substances in relation to a drug trafficking crime, you know, so basically they're saying I'm using a gun to protect the drugs, right? It's funny too, because when the feds stepped in, I'm actually glad they did, you know, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather do my time in the, fe in the federal system, yeah. you know, a different clientele, you know, yeah, they stepped in and, and, and I knew, I, I stayed in New Hampshire because my family could see me. I stayed there for about a year and a half, almost two years until I, until I had to go, you know, fly Connie at a you know, to, to, to Wyatt and then, uh, you know, from Wyatt, you know, to go to That's Wyatt like intake, and then to fly, right? yeah, to, yeah, to go on uh, MDC Brooklyn. You know, I joke, I was, I remember going, you know, I'm 21 years old and I'm on the, uh, we get off in, in Pennsylvania and, 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 you know, it's like the, the boondocks, you know what mm. I mean? And, uh, a lot of land, a lot of, a lot of prisons. And I remember they pulled into Lewisburg and, um, you know, I joke around, I'm like, man, I felt like Andy Dufresne going in there. It was like a castle, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, the one thing I knew, you know, it was as soon as I got there, it was like uh, a guy said it on the pod, you know, one of your one of your guys, and he mm -hmm. said that uh, it was it was good to hear. He said, you know, the Boston guys, they they do for what it's worth, you know, maybe it's not worth much to mo most people, but mm -hmm. it says it says a lot to me, you know, um, which is scary in a way too because you can get comfortable and like you know almost justify like, all right, I can do this, you know. It's like yeah. we get the best reputation and the and, you know mask guys have the best reputation, you know, in the in the whole system, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, I got my care package, you know what I mean? They knew I was coming, and I say all the time, unless you were a, like a, a a deviant or or, or a rat, it's yeah. like you know you know you can go anywhere you right know what I so mean? talk about like how big is that car like so I I haven't done state time, but I know that. Family, friends, I always say, like, you know, they say that um, there's an analogy. They say state times like a physical incarceration as opposed to the feds is a mental incarceration. Mm. I guess it all depends where you're at or whatever, you know, different levels and everything. I know that, I noticed that a lot of the guys that um that have come home from state, you know, even the, even the most, uh, the quietest kid or the, or the you know, the, the, the meekest kid, you know, uh, they come home and they're, they're, they're on edge. You know, there's something like, uh, like they have this... Uh, paranoia or they're always you know mm. there's something about them you know and it, it and it's uh and that wasn't my experience in the feds it was uh they say like in the state they'll have like you know the neighborhoods and shit like that yeah. and the one thing I, I that i do appreciate and that i'm grateful for is that like growing up in charlestown it's like you know it was like white irish catholic you yeah. know what i mean the one thing it was like but we grew up it was like you know i remember i had a fight with a um a dc kid a black kid from dc and I remember seeing him in the hole. We were in, we were outside and, and and we're in the cages and he's trying to get my attention for a couple of weeks and I'm doing my pull ups and my push ups and finally I say what's up, bro? Mm -hmm. And uh, the kid apologized to me. He was a young kid, but uh, he I said, "Listen, where you're from?" I goes, "Maybe." I goes, "You might think that there's like you know you might think all white people are punks or whatever." Yeah, yeah. I said to me, I goes, "Where I'm from?" I goes, "There's there's neighborhoods that go hard." You know what I mean? Yeah. That that shit's all you know. You gotta get that out of your head, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, and I met some guys. I met you know, people. I learned a lot about different cultures and stuff like that. I learned, uh, you know, I met good people and um, and I remember those you know in the feds when I did have that beef with the um with the kid from D.C. They all showed up in the yard. Every every you know Spanish, black, it didn't matter. They all showed up. All the Boston guys rode together. You know. Wow. You know, and uh, that's something that, like, that was a pretty, you know, when I heard yeah. that in the hole, I'm like, that's damn, a pretty bro, cool thing, you know yeah. what I mean? So talk a little bit about the, the D.C. guys, because that's they don't have, like, a county, state, so it's like, they must be <laughs> so, full of, you know, obviously, they've got to be the so majority. Even from talking to the, to the kid, Marcus, that I had a beef with, because I remember he got on the compound, and uh, we were playing flag football. I was kind of in my feelings. They were playing, you know, they're playing, playing like politics. And I thought I should be playing over this other dude from New York, this dude Buck. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm out of here. I went to get my net bag and the kid was sitting on my bag and I said, excuse me. And he didn't move. And I was kind of aggravated. I, I tugged the bag and, mm. and then he's looking. I said, what's up, bro? And he said, oh, what's up? And he put on a show and I'm by myself. So yeah. I'm like, all right, well. I'm not looking. Up, I'm not looking for a conversation, but at the same time, now it's, I'm not talking my tail, right? So yeah. now it's like, all right, we gotta stand off here. 
I said, buddy, I'm just, I just came to get my bag. He looked at me like I had 10 heads and I was by myself. And there was, there was about five or six dudes that I knew they were from DC. I see them on the weight pile, say, Hey, what's up? This and that I am by, I looked at all of them and, and, and the look on their face, they basically went like, you know, and turned their head like, Hey, you're on, yeah. you're on your own, right? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So, so that was it. I ended up, uh, yeah. So I got him. I got him good. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, I remember talking to him though in the, um, being in the hole for a few months and uh he ended up, you know his brother was um doing life across the street the kid was you know was a young kid he was angry mm-hmm. and um you know you talk about sometimes you know you just talk to someone you know what i mean yeah. like you know it's i told you know even being humbled you know like i mean i've taken beatings you know and it's like you know i always i mean that's something i teach my kid like buddy listen you know you can lose every fight but don't ever start one and lose one because if you do you just you're gonna, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. you'll never hear the end of it and rightfully right. so you know what i mean yep. you know a lot of in dc like i i, I what he told me, like, there's a lot of, um, you know, abuse. There's a lot of, obviously, drugs and yeah. stuff like that. So it's like, you know, it's just, it's it's a horror show. Chaotic. You know what I mean? And those, <laughs> they grow up in, uh, yeah, in, in poverty stricken. It's 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 a it's a disaster. So, so that night in the yard, they had like the head Muslim and from DC, and he was he wasn't happy that the the guys let that happen or whatever. And now is that something you would normally have to go to maybe? Whoever got the keys. I had a couple OGs from from the area, from you know, came to some of them, and they took me out of their wing. You know what I mean? And they were like well respected and, and and no nonsense, but like most respect the type of guys that um you know you'd never hear. They don't they don't glorify none of this shit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And they taught me. They took me out of their wing, and then and, and you know they really they they helped me. But they were they were there that night, and they you know they 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 squashed that quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you get led back out to the. Or do you have to change compounds? No, no. Well, see, that's the thing. Usually, yeah. So at that time, they were trying some new thing where, like, if um, usually they they'd send more, they send the loser out, or however it goes, (laughs) right? right? right. And uh, but um, they ended up, you know, letting us out together, and that was a little like, you know, you don't know, you know what I mean, what's going on in someone's head. So I got, you know, and we were in the same unit and stuff like that. But uh, it was funny because there was some hillbillies there too, like the Mm -hmm. um, the screws, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. They had like, you know, I say like two teeth, one for soup, one for steak, and they were like, (laughs) I don't know where they came from, but they like, yeah, they were like, they were happy that like I'm like, yeah, they're like trying to, they they were trying to jump on the bandwagon. I'm like, yeah, because the feds got all these high profile guys, man. You ever come across any high profile? Oh, absolutely. Well, see, that's what I mean about the clientele and stuff like that, you know, and then. I'll tell you right now that the it's funny like the New York guys we, we you know the boss like New York New York guys they, they respect the Boston guys right and and that's what that's you know I, I say like we you know we break balls and stuff like that but and uh, you know they can be the big apple and and, and <laughs> you know and, and yeah everyone else like you know thinks they, they they love that right they eat it up right, right that's right, New right, York right, right? Yeah. that's New York but. The one thing with Boston, they know that we don't give a fuck, that that we don't play that shit. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like it's a mutual respect, and but and for every just like I'm sure Boston the same thing, but New York is more prevalent because you know, and, and you'd have like the, you know, like the 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 mob and all that shit, and uh, you know, there's legit guys and John Gotti's guys play handball with them, and they had good morals, values. You know what I mean? They were raised, yeah. you know, the same thing where. And then they took a code, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I was thinking about that before when I came over here. I'm like, I remember thinking to myself, like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something big, right? I don't know if it's gonna be good or bad. I don't know, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? How it's gonna come across, but like something, I, I just feel it. I was thinking, like, I was so adamant and bought in when I went down that corner. Like, what do I gotta do five, ten years into my bid that you know this is what's the you know what was the what was the goal? What was the end game there? You know what yeah. I mean? It was and what was it wasn't all it was cracked up to be, you know. What was the highlight of uh, of of the year to mm-hmm. to write a, a a lifer in a you know in Lewisburg or something or you know a nice guy but like you know write a Christmas note and what and you know that shit doesn't mm-hmm. impress me it doesn't you know yeah. what I mean? so you got the, you got your ten years you come home now um, you got federal, so, so, federal probation and all so that so I, I had three years supervised release I went away at twenty one I come home at thirty you know they talk about being stunted emotionally mentally yeah. like there was no question at best i was 21 you know i'm probably like 15 or 16 you know right. what i mean that teenager 21 is giving yourself a little no. bit of credit yeah <laughs> Too much credit, right. maybe you know yeah. what i mean so no life skills no no you know no work ethic or anything because it was you know i i, I never earned nothing you know mm-hmm. what i mean i i thought i was gonna be robin hood you know what i mean now and, how's uh, it go as far as far as like programs and trades in there did you not learn any skills not opportunity for anything no, like that no they and, and it would have been nice, you know, I know guys when they were doing like in, in upstate, they were, you know, getting their degrees and stuff like that. I you just know? had a guy who got his barber license up there and all that. Really? Yeah, up in Mass. Well, yeah. so it's funny you say that. I come home and, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna conquer the world and 
I, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I had to do, I wanted to do something. So I go to, I go to bartender school, right? I'm going to be fucking Tom Cruise and cocktail. I go to barber school, right? I do a year there. Then I'm scared to cut someone's hair and fuck it up, right? right so right, I, I right. give up on that. You know, then I'm driving a truck and I'm like, hey, man, you know, I always say I'd rather work with my mind, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. do with my hands and, and even doing this today. Um, but I'll back up for a second. It's funny. Mm -hmm. You talked about the supervised release. Um, so I had three years supervised release. The feds in the, the in the courts over there, they're starting a thing called the, the drug program. So you can get time knocked off your, your, your per, off, off your supervised release. So I have drugs on my record. Because I have drugs on my record, I'm eligible. I get a year knocked off. I breeze through the thing, right? Because, you know, I haven't touched the drugs since, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, you know, they talk about you're either part of the solution or part of the problem. Like, I mean... You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's shameful. That's, you know, something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't feel good about that, right. that, that, you know, that I was selling poison basically, you know, mm -hmm. I do the drug program, breeze through it while I'm in the process of doing this. I'm looking for work and stuff. I go out to eat with a buddy one day and, uh, he had just come home from like Plymouth forestry or something. He did a little skid bit and, uh, and we're driving around, you know, reminiscing a little bit and, and. There was outside of Charleston High School. There was a, a a line of people like the football field size, and so my buddy's like, "Oh, we should go in there." I said, "What is it?" He says, "Oh, they're making that movie, The Town." I goes, what, oh, yeah, what, "What's that?" Good. He says, "Oh, it's Ben Affleck." He tells me a little bit. I'm like, "Yeah, dude. I'm like, that's crazy. That line. I'm not, I'm all set." Like an hour goes by, we drive by again. So he's like, "Come on, let's just check it out." So I'm like, "All right, well, you said it's about the neighborhood, right?" I said, "All right, well." You know, not to be an asshole, but I'm not, I'm not waiting in this line, right? So, <laughs> right? So I go up to the door, knock on the door. A girl lets me in. They got tables set up. It's funny. I just come home, so I'm like dressed. You know, I got the I got the jumpsuit on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I go and read a line. It's funny because my buddy's a little guy in a Napoleon complex, and he reads a line. The guy's like, "All right." Then I read a line. The guy asked me to read another one. After my friends like. Why'd you get to read two lines? I'm like, I don't know, bro. Come on. The guy got my information. This guy Pete called me the next day. And I came over to Cambridge, and they were set up over here. So he took care of me. He ended up he wanted me to be, me to be the fourth bank robber. Okay. I end up telling my my parole guy, right? I tell him I'm trying to be honest, right? Honesty yeah. is the best policy. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I tell him, thinking, all right, well, if I'm on set or something, if I'm working, I got to go take a piss or whatever the case may be. My I'll cover myself. And when I told this guy, the guy um he, he lit up, and he's like, you know, he made it like about himself and. He said, you know, my Mark Wahlberg. And I said, well, settle down, right? And uh, <laughs> and I remember what he did. He he was saying that he could violate me for handling the guns. He didn't like the fact that I was going to play a bank robber, right? Yeah. So one day, so now I'm telling Aff like this, and he has me meet with the other producer. And it was all, I mean, it was it was surreal, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was bringing people over from the from the neighborhood to, to, to meet him and stuff like that and introduce him and then just kind of give him a little background. But... How how was Ben Affleck, man? He's a Cambridge guy, but I mean, so he did right by me, you yeah, know. Um, cool. I will I say I say this, and and you know, no disrespect. It, it, um, Hollywood's Hollywood. Yeah. Um, it, you know, if me and you were sitting there kicking it right now, and um, you know, uh, uh, breaking bread, and and, and I, I don't think this would be his element, and we probably wouldn't be it wouldn't be ours in like a dinner party in, in, in LA. Yeah, right, you know right, what right. I mean? With, so in that aspect, yes. Well, uh, two different people. You know yeah. what I mean? I think the reason he liked me, you know, and I think that it would go for anyone was, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't, you know, I would never let, you know, that doesn't impress me. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. You're just you know? another person that and, just and, worked and, hard and in because life. Because I didn't, I didn't <laughs> show, it. I didn't show him any. You know what I mean? He was kind of like, you know, I sat there in the office that day and I told him a couple of my stories and, uh, you know, he was kind of picking my brain and I told him how I worked for the phone company and. Uh, in the movie, they 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 have the guy play for the phone company. That was my role, and yeah, I'm going up to to a younger Charleston kid, which I was happy for. But um, at the end, the, the the my supervisor release guy, he calls and he says, you know the you know it's you got the green light. This is after the fact. I brought him down to um, Lansdowne Street. We were filming a scene down there, and he got to meet um, Affleck. He's he's producing and acting in it, so he's like crazy busy. And, yeah, and um, he sees the guy, and 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 you know, and, and he says, uh, "What's up?" And I said. This is him. I said, Ben, this is the guy right there. This is my um, parole officer. <laughs> and he said, you know, he went over and it, it, it was funny. He was like short with the guy. I liked it. And But the guy's eyes lit up. He looked like, you know, I think he, you know. Starstruck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think he wanted to do more than that. To him, but he, he was like, and I was like, wow, look at this shit. And I realized, I'm like, he, he used me to like come meet these people. You know what I'm wow. saying? And then after the fact, when he told me, um, you know, you got the green light. I had gotten a call that day from Affleck. They were filming the next day. He said, Joe, I appreciate everything you've done for me. 
I'm going to make you an FBI agent, right? So, like, you know, that was cool. I still got to handle the guns and shit. Yeah. But, um, and then I did stand in for him every day because, like, so, like, I didn't know any of this stuff, but, like, a stunt double goes to school. They do stunts and all that shit. A stand in is just, like, some, like the same type of body frame, right. you know, like, just for camera angles and shit mm. like that. You know <laughs> what I mean? They're not going to do the dirty work. So I got to do that all, every day on set. But it was a great experience. You know nice. what I mean? It's funny because I never tell this story. And, um, you know, even growing up in Charleston, and like I, I, you know, my perceptions changed of it because my mindset's changed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, I, you know, I think differently, but like for a long time, you know, I did, I, I had a resentment against Charleston because I felt like, number one, if I grew up in Wellesley or something, like maybe I wouldn't have, you know, suffered like I did, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it would have manifested itself in, in a different way. There's a lot of jealousy, haters, there's a lot of miserable people, you know what I mean? And that's not, not the energy that I, that I carry, yeah. but I feel it off people and yeah. that shit, like, I feel like things are in people, you know what I mean? And like, and it just takes something to come out. And you know, even with that situation, like I felt like, uh, like I just came, I just spent my twenties in prison, bro. This fell in my lap, right? right? Like, what fucking decent person? Like, who wouldn't be happy? happy like, hey, this, yeah. you know, good for this kid. You yeah, know what I mean? Kid just the ten years in prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, you know, and, and there was a couple of people I had to talk. What's that to, meant? A couple of people. I'm like, what's up? And you know, oh, I heard you talking. I yeah, like, it's, I said, I don't need to tell no one's story but my own brother. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you know how that goes. You know what I mean? You know, people, but... The negative the, energy. It's yeah. draining, bro. It's, it, it it's really draining. It comes from sometimes people you love, too, man. And it's, that, that's where it's exhausting. That's hot. You know yeah. what I mean? That's hot, you know, because you, you can't get away from that, I feel like, sometimes. Talk about those 10 but years those in prison, boundaries. about your, your um, self-discovery journey or anything like that. What did you learn so, about yourself? Anything that you picked up, you fell in love with, working out, maybe, so writing? I tell you what, so the, the, I look back, uh, it wasn't until I was probably 40 years old and... and like I say, like I, I, I went away at 21, I blinked and like, you know, or even I went down that corner at 16 and, and I blinked and I was 30 years old, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a little kid and uh, like Billy Madison, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, you know, and, and, and it's funny till it's not, you know what I mean? It's right. like life's real and it's, uh, you know, what do I do now? You know, with all the best of intentions, you know what I mean? And then without realizing it subconsciously now I'm being a, I'm, I'm by default, I'm, I'm being everything I'm, I wasn't taught to be or everything that's not, you know, it's like, I'm not a victim, but like, if I'm, you know, if I keep falling on my face and like not understanding why or not learning why or not trying to figure out why, yeah. you know what I mean? And for a long time, I was like that. <clears throat> so you stay stuck. But um, when I was away, I, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I remember I was probably 40 years old and I asked myself, uh, like I like a self reflection, and, and I must have got to the point. I, I talk about being grateful for pain, right? Being great, grateful for like struggling and stuff like that. Because like, what, how would you know anything different? How would how could you appreciate anything? Exactly. You know, I remember thinking um, the best I ever felt when I look back was like, I'm like, man, the best I ever felt. I was probably like 25. You know, I had about five in. I had five to go. And the only thing, and it's it's so profound to say, but and I, I know why I, because number one, I had structure, right? But like that's not that that's a that's a sign of like you know um, that's dysfunction or, or abnormal thinking or mm -hmm. alcoholism where right. it's like I'm okay, you know, settle up for less. I'm okay with someone, some hillbilly telling me what to eat, sleep, go right. to the bathroom. Force you know what I mean? It's forced structure, and I'm okay with that, <laughs> yeah. like an animal. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Because I don't want no responsibilities, and uh, I'm sleeping, I'm eating. Right, these things that like you know, wow, that that are important that we don't know, and uh, mm -hmm. and I was working out, so like those endorphins that were kicking off, like it was like I felt like a million bucks, but meanwhile I'm behind, I'm behind the wall, right? I felt better I than I have ever, ever felt on the street, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I guess that's what I had to learn out here. That's what I'm still trying to learn on a daily basis, you know what I mean? And uh, I also learned in there. I attributed. I, I think back, like you know, and I'm glad I met you. And, and, and another reason I wanted to meet you is because. I feel like I believe that we all have, um, this is my theory, I think that like, you know, your higher power, I think that we all are blessed with like a God-given talent, right? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm sure we have multiple ones, but I believe that like everyone has one that like just comes naturally. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to question it. They're not, there's no insecurity, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they just know and they can do it like blindfolded. And I think, I, I believe, you know, it's that, that if you can do something like, to, to pursue that, but also do something like where it helps other people and stuff like that. I think that's yeah. huge. So when I was in, in, in the hole, what got me through that really was like my outlet was writing, right? I'd always, I could, I always said, you know, to this day, I should probably work on it, but to this day I can write better than I can speak, right? Mm -hmm. I can express myself better through writing than speaking. And, and I remember being a kid, you know, seven, eight years old. And I remember writing sorry notes and, and tiptoeing down the stairs. And uh, you talk about that heavy house and like that, you know, the chaos or the yelling and all, you know, all, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah. different trigger and shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
as a kid, you know, you, you're like you're walking on eggshells. You, 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 yeah, the wind slams the door a little too loud. And you know like, what I'm oh, saying? Geez, right. Stop PTSD, right? right? Yeah. No, no shit. <laughs> and I remember tiptoeing down the stairs and, and, and I only have flashes of like, you know, I don't know if it's uh, if I blocked it out or if it's from the angel dust. I don't know. But <laughs> I ended up, I, I'd slide it under my, 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 my parents' uh, bedroom door. And, and it would never be talked about, nothing like that. I swear my mother still saved them. But I remember thinking back to my, I, thinking back, um, you know, years later, and I'm like, what, what could I have done at seven, eight year old, seven or eight years old that I was, that I felt shame or guilt about? And, that, and, and the answer I came out with was nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So that was something, you know, like they talk about, like, you know, um, give yourself a break or put the bat away and all that shit. And uh, it, that all made sense to me, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, doing the, doing the writing, that was my outlet. And um, it was like something, you know, like someone was putting that shit in my head mm -hmm. and I was putting it down. And when I recite it back to myself, it was like, uh, I joke, it was like some Tony Robbins shit, but it was all self-motivational, yeah. all powerful stuff. Was it almost like you couldn't believe that you actually are the one that wrote it? Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? No, no. <laughs> it, like, and, and, and you know what? And, and, and I say it all, like the the writing, to me, it's it's like I say, like down the corner as kids. And I'm sure the same thing for you. You know, you talk about abnormalcy or whatever. Like, people, we, we weren't asking, like, hey, what are you good at, right? Like, mm -hmm. if someone was to say, like, hey, hey, Joe, what do you like to do? What are you good at? Like, you'd be like, Joe, what are you trying to do? Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, <laughs> like, yeah, like no almost like they're setting you up, like, you yeah. know, wait, what's going on, you know? Yep. And uh, so... But that's normal to like for people to talk like. But like as kids, you know, it's like yeah, you know, I had to like oops. rediscover myself, and 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 when I came home, like okay, now that I'm not like drinking and, and smoking and something, what do I even like to do? And I'm like okay, working out, and yeah. I, that's something that I fell back in love with. Absolutely, in in jail, but in in prison. But that's on my day when I, I remember being like 13, listening to BMX, just doing curls and push-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, I yeah. even knew how to work. You know, yeah, the, right. the show muscles in front of the mirror yeah. that you see. That's all I was doing. <laughs> was curl I didn't know how to work out, but I loved it. Yeah, and right, right. something about that. What did you like to do as a kid? That's the pure, you know, that's you at its purest form. And yeah, you got to right. kind of rediscover that. No, that absolutely. Person, I know? agree, 100%. You know, going away when I did at such a young age, like it masked my 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 underlying issues. It masked my alcoholism and stuff. Like, and even when I learned about that, right, which like I was 40 years old and it's like the things that we justify all like that we can like, um, you know, to me it was like an alcohol, you know, that's like someone with a brown paper bag and like mm -hmm. stemming or whatever. And, and, you know, and yeah, it's like, yeah. But it's so much deeper, and like, and I love the psychology aspect of it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I love that shit because there's answers in there, there's truths in there. There's I can I can make sense of things. It's a little harder to to, to implement that, and you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to, towards your life. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah, and, and make that work. But uh, you know, it's a work in progress. But so when do you find out that alcohol is a problem for you? Does it manifest itself into like so trouble with the law? I said, you know, when I went away at 21, you know, I, I, I my ego told me like, you know, you, you know, this is, you know, um, you made a kid. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's not what my, my what inside was saying, you know, but mm -hmm. my I had to like play that role. And what I realized is this, like, you know, when those doors crack, especially when you're in the hole and shit like that. And, you know, and, and I think of I think of those times like that's inhumane shit. Like. Honestly, Bobby, I realized that I'm a human being, right? I might have ran around with sociopaths, psychopaths, uh, people that can disassociate from reality, people that can numb, numb their feelings. I don't have that luxury. I wish I could flick that switch. So I know that's one thing I learned. Yeah. Bro, y'all got to feel every second of this, right? It's here for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, when they say, I'm, I'm not going to pay the price no more, you know? Yeah. But don't get it twisted. I still, you know, it, it's... The behaviors or the or the mentality and stuff like that where, you know, I know I have to earn things like, you know, to me, it's like, you know, financial insecurity. That's a big thing. You know, yeah. I had money as a kid that I shouldn't have had that like, you know, kids should have that. And I and I, I wish I had given it to my mother and let her, right. you know what I mean? You get used to spend, spending a certain way and then now you yeah. got a budget. It's unrealistic. And, and, and that's something that's haunted me. That's something that's still to this day. It's like, you know, it's it's embedded in me. And like, and I know that it needs to change. Like that has to change. You know what I mean? But I also feel like, and I know you have to sacrifice and, 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 and I'm, I'm, you know, I've done that for my family and I'm willing to do that. But at the same time, like, you know, what makes you happy? What, you know what I mean? What makes you tick? You know, I want to do something that like I'm passionate about. Like, I don't want to, if I have to wake up every day and go to a job that I'm miserable at, I already, I, I learned that about myself. You know what I mean? Like that, that's not going to work for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to take, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, you talk about networking and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know many, many Charlestown kids that will come and do stuff like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, I just feel like, you know, you get in where you fit in and like, um, you know, you pursue what you want to pursue, but that's what I wanted to, and I'd love to, you know, chop it up with you, you know, moving further, you know, uh, moving along because, uh, 
the writing and stuff. What my, my passion and what my goal is, and I feel like I'm that I'm not only supposed to do it, I feel like like that there's no question I can do it. And if you were to, like going back to it, that's not how we think, right? Like if someone was to say like I don't, I'll, I'll, you know, be an I'll, you know alcoholic addict, have that mentality, we don't think very highly of ourselves. You know right. what I mean? Like that first thought, you know what I mean? Like they say. For someone that thinks so little of himself, I'm all I think about. But mm. only an alcoholic knows those thoughts aren't good ones. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, you know, uh, egomaniac with inferiority complex. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and uh, but I want to ghostwrite. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to write. I want to stay behind the scenes. I just want to mm. write. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a, you know, 45 year old white like, rapper. You know what I mean? But I know that right. I have a story that, that like how does just I know the words. I know how to. That's and, and if you were to ask me what you know what you like off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you because I don't. Yeah. The only thing I do know is that writing is that something that I'd love to pursue. You know what I mean? And, and you know, even with the um, I don't know anything about like how to do beats and all that stuff. I, I'd love okay. to learn how to do it, but yeah. I'd also really my I, I just want to write. I want to write. You know what yeah. I mean? I can do it. It's 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 my passion, and uh, you know what I mean. I feel like you know, I used to you know I grew up you know Eminem and shit like that, all like Jada Kiss and like mm -hmm. you hear a story. You know what I mean? There's a story yeah. to be told. You know, Paint it's nice picture. to be at the club and like. Have a good beat, and you know what I mean. Man, that's just like a, a form of like journaling almost, because like it's not really accepted or socially normal for for men, at least in my neighborhood, to sit right. down and be like, I'm gonna write in my journal today. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. it was just like a complex way of the mind, like really getting it out. It's something to be said for getting stuff out of here and out of here, out of your heart and out of your head. That that outlet, whether it's working out, whether it's writing, you know yeah. what I mean? It can't stay here. It can't stay here. So if it don't come out of here, it's going to come out the side of my neck. Right, yeah, it's yeah. going to come out somewhere. How long you been out now? So long, thank God I get it. So I came home in, two, I went away in 2000, came home at the end of 2009. So I did 111 months altogether. I came home, I get a good support system, you know, with the rat race, like, you know, I, it was like, I would have loved to believe, you know what I mean? Like, they, they didn't throw a parade for Joe, you know what I mean? They yeah, didn't. Yeah, 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 like, it's not like <laughs> yeah. good, good fellas. Yeah, they you come home to a... They weren't like, handing me envelopes. <laughs> hey, you popped the cherry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you kept your yeah. mouth shut. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I learned that in the sandbox. I didn't need to, like, do a bid to fucking... Like, what um, do you think is, like, the biggest part of you staying free? My family, 100%, you know, support system, Absolutely you know what I mean? Yep. Not wanting to disappoint them, you know what I mean? But at the same time, uh, you know, like I said, it's... It, and that's the thing, too. It's, it's not even scared straight. It's like... Like, you know, like I said, you know, the scary part is when you know that, like, that, that kid that went in and saw Lewisburg in the castle and was like, you know, my mind was spinning, my head was spinning. And then once I'm there and I settle in and it's like, wow, this, you know what I mean? I can, right. get, I can get used to this, right? Yep. I don't want to. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why would I ever want to? That's insane. You know, and, and, and that's the thing. Like, they, you know, I'm it's, 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 yeah, it's easy. A, yeah. And, and I see it all the time. You know what I mean? I see it. And, and, and that's not me. It's not how I was raised. I, my family, you know, I don't want to let them down. But at the same yeah. time, I know that, like, I mean, and that's why I go, that's why I talk to guys like you, like-minded people, because my family is not there, whether I'd like them to or not, it's, it, they're not obligated, it's not their job to understand me, it's not their mm -hmm. job to, you know, know why Joe's feeling the type of way this way, or, or, or why he still thinks crazy, yeah. or why he, you know what I mean? Now, yeah. are you in recovery, do you go to like AA meetings Yeah, all so that? I go to no, AA pretty much every day, twice a day if I can. You know, I was 40 years old, and, and uh, I was working for uh, the Boston Globe, I was working overnights, and you know, trying to be, you know, like Peter Griffin, the family man, and trying to feel good about that and stuff and trying to provide. And it, it was all foreign to me. I, yeah. I was, you know, I had all the best of intentions, but like to me, it was, wasn't was enough or I needed to get more and, and, and you know, not even for myself, just to appease and mm -hmm. like uh, came home and I met a girl and, and, and she had, she was a widow and she had two little kids and I fell in love with the kids. And, and honestly, that mm -hmm. I felt a sense of purpose the first time in my yeah. life. I was like, all right, this is, go you know, this mm -hmm. is... Um, you know, came like, you know, full circle here. This is my purpose. Yeah. I felt purpose. And the kids got a little older. They were, you know, they were, I think, two and five at the time. Now they're around 20 and 17. And, you know, they yeah. get to an age. They don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, now you're, now you're left with self, right? Just like you're, yeah. you're stuck with yourself. And like, you know, I guess that's part of the, part of the process. And uh, yeah, so, and I didn't like that. And, and yeah, that's when I, I noticed. I remember my mother saying to me, I, I don't understand you were never a big drinker. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand either. But I, I, what, I, what I learned when I went to AA and stuff like that is, is the, you know, and I'm passionate about it for the simple fact, like, I put it like this. Every, every, what I say, like, I don't know if I've ever had an original thought. Let's just say everything I've said has been regurgitated. The difference today is that growing up, I regurgitated like false. I regurgitated a facade, lies, uh, misinformation. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And um, and now the difference is now like 
I regurgitate the truth. I believe it. Right. I know it. I feel it. I see it. The people I, that I associate with now, there's no agenda. There's no motives. They don't want nothing. Right? They actually, they just want, they want to see you do good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is. It's foreign. Yeah. But it's real. You know what I mean? And then you, you know, you root for other people and, and, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, you want to be humble. It's like the opposite of the street, like bizarre world. Like I say, like you go in there and like you, you want to act like a tough guy. You want to, you want to, you want to be, have a chip on your shoulder. You want a fucking mean mug and all this. Y'all going to stick out like a sore thumb, right? This ain't yeah. the street. This yeah. ain't the corner. Right. That doesn't fly, right? Nope. Y'all got, you know what I mean? And, and, and sometimes you need that. Some people need that, you know? Mm -hmm. To, to let down to let down that facade, let down that card, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Just be you. That's what so that's about. what it's allowed me to do. It's to, you know, is to try to, yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, to be excited. It's like, wow, I don't have to play. I don't have to play that role. I don't have to, you know what I mean? Because yeah. all that shit got, got me nothing. You know what I mean? Right. What's What's been your proudest moment since, since you've been out, man? You know what? I'm glad you asked me that. I would say, um, I would say my kids, I would say, you know, meeting their mom and the kids when I did, mm. that was my proudest moment. You know, life happens and stuff. The one thing, and I was always proud of that. And it's something I feel like I should be to give two kids like a dad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like who they lost theirs. And uh, like, that was a nice feeling, you know? Sometimes people don't want to say they put their foot in their mouth. Sometimes they're trying to say something nice. It's just, yeah, it's, yeah, at first I'd be like, you know, oh, that's flattering. Thank you. And after a while, it's like, bro, like, you know, I, like, I, I mean, I love these kids, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, to, and I guess that's what I needed too. Like, you know, and, and talk about responsibilities when something, something, you love something more than you love yourself. Well, you know what I mean? I never, I, I, I needed to actually learn how to, in order to, to take care of them properly. That was, that was the biggest thing. The biggest uh, game changer is like, it was so profound to me. That's why I love it. I love, I love like recovery and like all this shit because it was so, to this day, like it, it gets, I hear something, it gets so profound and it was like, yeah. if you don't take care of you, like you, you'll never be what you need to be, what you want to be for the people you care about. And for, for the, my whole life, Good intentions, good intentions, good intentions. Feel, feel, feel. Fall on my face. Hurt this one. Hurt that one. Disappoint. Mm -hmm. And then subconsciously, George feels so right for himself, right? right? Yeah, the guilt, and guilt. it doesn't. You know what no. I mean? Doesn't get you nowhere, man. So you're not hustling OCs no more. What are you doing for money now? We, you gotta... So I'm working. I work for the local 25. I work for the Teamsters. How long you been doing that? Now? I've been doing that for 10 years. 10 years. So yeah. what do you do? You, you drive. You said you had the CDL. I have what my you're doing, CDL. Or you're doing but now else? I work over the trade shows. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of us over there. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and, and it's a good industry. You know, good, good money and stuff like that. Um, but it's all timing, you know what I mean? You gotta, you know, the seniority, I wish that, uh, you can't get those 10 years back. You know, it's definitely, it's, it's tough to start to, you know, to start late, you know what I mean? But yeah, absolutely, at least yeah. we get an opportunity to do that. So exactly a lot. And many people don't have that opportunity to make things right. And it's never, it's never too late to do great. Man. So, no, absolutely. You know, you know what I mean? You know, I should love be proud energy, of yourself. Yeah. yeah. What are some things that, um, that you want to do with yourself and with your life moving forward, man? You got any short term goals, long term goals? I could hear that same same statement. I could, you know, I'm sure I have, you know, uh, I do from like a loved one, you know, or so, you know, that little kid in me, like, you know, I get defensive, like, you know, I take it personal, like, uh, I feel like, how can I tell this person? I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, you, you feel like, dude, you're fucking 45 years old now, kid. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? You're almost embarrassed to be like, I, I don't know. You know right. what I mean? Like, you shouldn't, you know, like, you. so you're, I'm constantly being like, all right, I, I, I can't ask for help with that because, like, you know, mm -hmm. dude, you're old enough. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I got <laughs> but you. at the same time, I don't know, man. I I, I want to write. I get stuck. I hit a, I hit a, I hit a wall because, like, I feel like I'm, like, all right, Joe, this is what you want to do. Like, like I would walk into an office, like, if given the opportunity, and like if there was someone that, like, you know, like I'm a big fan of Millie's, right? You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And, uh, Shout out to Millie's, right? Came yeah, for show. real, absolutely. Yeah, they, I mean, he, he's he's the, the, he's the hottest out there. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like straight it, up. It, but like coming from Cambridge, seeing him do it since like. I remember him. He's a little younger, like yeah. high, high school. Like glad to see some, like the hard work paying off. Absolutely, that inspires me. Like one hundred percent. You got you young. You you got twenty years left in Absolutely. you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If I just commit. I I have saying, that. I'm not. If I plan to not go back to jail, I got the rest of my life. I deserve it too. Absolutely. The street, but yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. It's good to see that though. It's 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 motivating. Yeah, to see. but I would love to. You know, what I mean, like something where. Um, that's that's something. Like I said, there's nothing else I could I could even think of that that I would be. That have the confidence to walk up to right. someone and be like, "Hey, how are you?" Like, you know, check this out or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But something like that, I uh, yeah, I just you know, it, it, I just feel it. I feel it. You ever and, think and, about writing a book or anything like that? Well, honestly, I think, and I say this to people like I'll ask 
I'll meet people, different people, whatever. I'm like, oh, you know, do you, you know, about you know, music, whatever, this and that. And, and I try to, and, and then it kind of always, I think on my part, I don't pursue it because I'm like, um, I don't know how to go about it. Like, I don't know, like, I just need guidance or I need a little yeah. direction. You know what yeah. I mean? I, and, and, the how is, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what you want to do. Right. How do I do it? Right. But I also understand that, like, you know, maybe I got to put the, like, literally, like, put myself in a position, come in here yeah. today. You know what I mean? Put, you know, put yourself out there, like, where it's like, not for nothing, but like, yeah, right, that's great. You can write show. That's, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. People, you've read shits. Yeah. But like, Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, it's, no one's going to know. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? No, you just got to get out there. And like you said, you just got to do it. And uh, don't be afraid to mess mess up and, and learning via, you know, application as opposed to ob um, observation. You know right, what I mean? Right. And this is how I learned. Even this, bro, I didn't know nothing about doing a podcast, any of these cameras, anything. When I first started, man, I messed up. Uh, I had an interview with no audio. I had one with no video, but you know what? I kept coming back. Absolutely. So that's what it's about. Like the AA, man, well, keep coming, but, but bro. That, but that's, that's ninety percent of shit. But I think up. that's what's in us. That, like, yeah. that's, that's what, and that's something I hold my head up. Where it's like, uh, you know, I saw a kid recently say, and, and it's true. Like the game's over, bro. It's a wrap, right? Yeah. Anyone that don't know that, like fucking good <laughs> technology's luck, come you know way what I'm too saying? far. Like it's over. I'd hate to be a kid nowadays. You know what I mean? I, well, they're not even. The thing is, we know that era before cameras, before like yeah. we know like this is not normal, right? It's a harsh truth or harsh reality, but like they talk about, um, like I, I had to realize, and it was when I when, when I was away, it was like I'm the asshole, right? That like that I'll be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person, right? But this could be a friend, like I'm loyal, right? Like fucking, that's my friend, right? Like I'm gonna, right? I'm not doing nothing. Right? Maybe, yeah, I, I might know what he's doing, but no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, next thing you know, I'm, I'm catching a, I'm, I'm a code, you know, I get a Cody, I'm, I'm, I got a accessory to murder because you know right. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, yep. you know, or, or, or whatever the case may be, and I'm the asshole that like that. That's gonna. I'm gonna. I'll curl up before I'll ever fucking roll over. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. You know. All right. Write my family a letter. God forbid. You know what I mean? Say I can't do this. Sorry. You know. But like, to have to to, but to know that about yourself, where like there's no there's no out. There's no alternative. You know what I'm right. saying? And like, that's for the birds, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. So, Absolutely. To try to try to walk. You know, tread lightly. So or just to be clear, there's been since you've been out, no arrest. Anything like that? No, no there's been arrests. Okay, yeah. I don't know if that's not you want. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's yeah. been arrests. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, inside, I look back and I feel like um, going away. It masked my, it masked my issues. It masked my alcoholism. You know what I mean? I was, I went away at 21, and, and you know, um, if anything, like at the time, like alcohol, it's like you'd wear that as a badge of honor. Like, oh, you know, I can drink a dirty pack. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not falling down. You know what I mean? It's a, uh, you know, I can hit. You know, but like drugs, that was like a, like a. That'd be like a fighting word, you know what I mean? You call, you know, the, yeah. the shit they say now, you know, it's like it's, that, that wasn't a, um, it wasn't a flex, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly. The euphoria wore, at, wore off after maybe six months or so, you know, and then and then the, the, the fear, doubt, insecurity kicked in with uh, money, you know. Yeah. And, um, all right, what am I going to do? And I call my old connect, and, um, and, and 10 years later, you know, and, and it just switched from the dust of the pills and, 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 um, I, you know, I, I put some money away and I said, all right, I'll, I'm going to, um, you know, just, this I just need a little something to, to start up. And, you know, they say you need money to make money. And, yeah. uh, I also, you know, just have that safety net. I just like to look, I just like to mm -hmm. look, you know, it's right. there, you know what I mean? And, um, and I did that and, um, and then I settled down Then I, you know, I met a girl and stuff and, and I look back and the truth be told, you know what I mean? And I have to hold myself accountable for certain things like this, you know, and it's tough to, it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's like. You know, when we do things, um, self, you know, talk about self-centered, it's like out of fear, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not that there's any love lost or anything or there's, you know, you, you can have the best of intentions, but it doesn't mean, you know, like what's your, what's your, what's your agenda, what's your motive, what's your, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like why, 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 you know, Jeff, are your intentions pure? You know what I yeah. mean? Are they, so, but um, yeah, I gave, I remember I was supposed to pick the kids up at the boys and girls club one day and uh, they were young and gave my friend a ride. He was going to meet someone and, and uh, we went, we had to go a little further south, you know, mm -hmm. Charlestown. We go north, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah, yeah. And uh, crossed that. So we went down South Shore and um, got off an exit in Braintree. Pulled into a gas station, you know, we're sitting there waiting, waiting. Finally, the kid comes about 15 minutes later. I uh, come to find out there's a police station right across the street. You know what wow. I mean? Shit. <laughs> and there was a couple couple undercovers at the uh, pump watching the whole thing. Damn. So, yeah, he takes off high-speed chase, throwing everything out. I had nothing on me. They grabbed me or whatever. And But to have to explain that, you know, I remember, yeah. you know, I scared, scared my uh, wife at the time and, 
you know, and I felt like a shit bag for not picking right. up the kids, not being able to say no, where, where it's like, yeah. like, dude, I gotta pick up my kids. Oh, no, 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 no. My mom had a tough time saying no to us as kids, too, you yeah. know? It's and, all learned uh, behavior, bro. It, exactly. It really is. But, they, and, you know, it's funny because they talk about don't discriminate, and, and like, and that's another reason I wanted to, like, I, I heard one of the dudes talking, he was talking about busing, and he was saying, like, you know, like, real recognizes real, you know what I mean? Like, that, like even, yeah, I grew up in Charleston or whatever, like, but when I was on that bus going to, going to you know, going to Pennsylvania, and, you know, it was me, a Canadian, and, like, a, a kid from probably New Bedford, and, and there was no other white kid, white guys, I, I wasn't, because I grew up in the city, like, that, yeah. I wasn't, like, you know, I, but, yeah, and he said, he talked about bus, and he was talking about how, you know, it, it affected everyone, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there, there was white kids from Charleston, you know, there's poor kids from Charleston, yeah, there's poor, yeah. but yeah, it's funny, you know, it's, it's a, to meet different people from different, you know, different cultures, different, you know, yeah. and it's all, I mean, real recognizes, real pain is a common denominator, That's, you know? At the end of the day, yeah. But, but I do think that, yeah, I think, uh, I'll, tell, I'll say this, I, I, I feel like as much as like the stigma or like, yeah, you know, when I'll speak for myself, like, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm not on point, if I'm not trying to like move in the right direction, or I'll, I'll, I'll give an honest effort at the very least. And uh, I can, you know, I can suck, right? I can be, I, I can not, you know, something in, but at the same time, I feel like when we're doing the right thing or like we're trying to put the, you know, our best foot forward and like we can like put our head on the pillow and know that at mm -hmm. night and get right. a good sleep and not fucking sit there and yeah, that I, be I believe like that, I you know, Maybe I'm biased, but I think that like we, you know, we're like the sky's a limit for like for, for people like us. I do. I, I really believe that. You know, Absolutely. I wish more people felt that way too. You know, you know, to talk to kids and be, or, or whoever. You know, it doesn't even matter. I mean, you see guys in halfway houses, 50, 60 years old. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, yeah, just to tell them, like, dude, like, number one, I tell them, like, you know, some. I always feel like I grew up in a house, like, so it's like, you know, talking, like walking on eggshells, nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. You know, all girls. So it was like, you know, so like I get sensitive, right? But like I can't, like, but I'm a guy. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's funny because it's like, you know, I feel like sometimes people need tough love. Sometimes people need coddling. Sometimes people need a bit of both. You know what I yeah. mean? Who knows that better than us? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, but, you know, to even tell people, like sometimes I have no problem, you know, if I, I feel like uh, without preaching, being like, you know, just telling someone if I think they could handle it, you know, I think that they, you know, I tell them, like, bro, you're not a victim. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I get it. You know, by default, if I put, my, any mind on mood altering substance, all that shit, you know, and I don't get crazy. I, I do my thing. I try to keep it simple, but I also no, notice that like when I speak and I'm okay with it, when I speak, the language is that of like, I feel good about it. I can feel yeah. it's not a, it's not a fucking a war story. It's not, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not some bullshit that like, you know, if you want to hear that, like, you know, ask about me, get on the corner, you know what I mean? But yeah. I always say like, if I needed to come home and go down the corner and, and, and ask some some jerk off, like if I'm a if you know if I needed accolades or reassurance or validation from that person, then I'm the jerk off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't be afraid to make mistakes if you're not making the mistakes that are gonna land you yeah. with, in in jail or prison or anything. Well, see, you know, like you know that. what I like that I, I wanted to mention this that so I've been you know I'm watching you and I'm like the one thing that you know one of the things that attracted me I'm like I love. And especially like when, you know, when a, like AA allows that or whatever, but like, that's where I learned of it, but I'm sure there's other places. It's like when someone can be their authentic self or someone's himself, right? I don't care where you're from, what color you are. Yeah. Like, I don't care anything. That shit is attractive to mm. me. Like, I'm like, that's yeah. gangster right there. Because <laughs> right. as a kid, like I was a follower for right. a long, long time. Nope, so me to me, it's like, that's like. Wow, bro, that's bold. You know what I mean? Well, you like, know how I look at it is, man, is, is I tried this whole, let me try to be this guy, that guy. And you still are going to get people who don't like you and who like of you. Of course. But then it's like the people that like you, do they like they like you for this guy you're pretending to Absolutely. be? And the people that don't, you that you want to like you, would actually probably like the real <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, right, So it's like right. at this point, it's like you just be yourself and let the and chip, chips to, fall where they may. you don't have to worry made. about anything else. Exactly. The people who like you, then that's that's right. true. That's and pure. that's who's people supposed who to be in your life. See ya. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. You don't have to question nothing. Absolutely. I just want a little bit of advice for somebody. What advice would you give to somebody who just say they just came home from the feds today? I would say get connected. I'd say, number one, you, you can't do it alone, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have to. And there's, there's plenty of, I mean, the resources out here are crazy, bro. You know, stay close. Just, you know, do you, like, yeah. you know, focus on you. Forget about, uh, you don't know anyone, anything. There's mm -hmm. no, you know what I mean? Anyone that's supposed to be there for you is going to be there for you. You know what I mean? There's no, you don't have to force nothing. Yeah. I like but, that. I said, make connections and 
network because you know what you were in these places prisons you're networking with you know the so-called killers and yeah. tough guys and all that when it's like you come out here these people are fish out here that are in your average so you what? should what? yeah you know what i'm saying like you no. should really be able to because it's all finesse Bro, and most of the that game right. in there is finesse it's not of really course. the strong arm in your face type of the, it's the finesse game and even you got to know a little finesse just to get by yeah. just so you don't well, get finesse it, right and it, so, so now there's manipulation that gets involved in like in a lot of it for, for survival right? right and i always say too about the one thing that you know there were many perks of like prison right i will say that like talk about reading people mm -hmm. right you know especially you're i mean when you're forced to you know you have to you sit there. You're forced to, whether I like it or not, by default, um, you're reading people all day. Yeah. You're watching people all day, right? And and you learn like who's who, what's what, mm -hmm. you know. When when to, you know, so we have we have that sense of right. uh, you know, which is a, a blessing and a curse. Right. I think. And you take time. that from in there and bring it out. And but the, I think the most important thing though to take from in there is that structure. But it's like when you come out here, it's it's, it's not forced upon you, so it's harder. We have it in us. Yeah, left it's, to our own device. Yeah, but it's I th there. Probably, I think that's part of it. You know, I mean, not to get like too deep, but I, I think that like that's. Part of the, that's part of the process, part of the journey. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. You know, it's have like, fun too. That's what I'm saying. That's why my main thing with this is to at the end of the day, when I get nervous, I like I don't know you. I meet all these new people. That, right. Like I started with my friends, but now I'm meeting all of a sudden. Sometimes I get nervous. That's what's but I'm up, like, Bobby, though, you know what? Have this. Why did you start this to, in the, in this purest form? It's like to get man. these stories out here and have yeah, fun. You know do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, so, this is your thing. I appreciate that, yeah, man. I don't know up, if there's bro. any last words you wanted to add. Before we wrap this up, any last advice you want to give out? And then you could drop um, social media and all that, too. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's the thing. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, keep moving forward, trying to, you know, trying to do something with this. I know there's too much money out here to be made legally than, than for me to, you know, yeah. contemplate and, and, and consume my mind, wasting time and energy. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no bags of money falling out of the sky. That's for sure. And uh, no. no, I'm just, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Like I said, you know, I, uh. This is, you know, something they say, you know, get com get comfortable, get uncomfortable to get comfortable. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, just doing things like I feel like I'm at that crossroads where, you know, it's time to either step up, you know, do, do it, do it is going to make you happy. You know what I mean? Uh, it's I funny because I was talking to my, when I, before I left my house, my mother says, uh, what are you, where you off to, you know? <laughs> that, that never changes, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm saying, I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to do this little podcast and, uh. She's like, yeah, what's it about? I told her, I'm like, it's about like recovery and, you know, it's about, you know, just, um, it's good stuff, positive stuff. And um, she's like, yeah, well, don't tell them too much. <laughs> but um, yeah, funny. no, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And uh, any last words, I tell people, uh, you know, do what makes you happy, follow your heart, you know what I mean? Uh, Absolutely. You know, and uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. I mean, that, that old that's saying, it. that's oh the best God. advice I could you could ever give anyone, right? I, I tell my kids that. Bro, I can't promise you success. I can't promise you fame. I can promise you this. If you treat people the way you want to be treated, you'll be okay in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, but absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity, my friend. Absolutely. And, you know, nothing changes if nothing changes, right? right. So you got to try new things. And I'm glad to be able to provide something new for someone I appreciate to do. That, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it really... Well, I'm gonna be hitting you up with the music and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'll share people. all of that. Yep. So I don't know if they want to get people follow you on Instagram. So what's it, Juno? So J U N O underscore two six two seven. I got some poetry on there, some some little things I'm trying or whatever. But uh, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you like it. Hopefully you relate and. Uh, you know, yeah, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Guys, I'm your host, Bobby. One more time for the people, man. That's my boy, Joey, a.k.a. Juno. Guys, it is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here. The Bounce Back Podcast. Peace out. All alone in the zone, wondering what's yet to come. Reflecting back on the days before I went numb. Is this all just a game? Can I salvage my fate? Did God tell me something before it's too late? A young man in my prime. Who still don't have a clue about what the future holds or what I will do. What have I really accomplished? What have I done? Besides get sent away to prison for some pills and a gun. It was all just a game. I was just a young boy. A gun in my hands was like a kid with a toy. Till they took me from my family to serve my first bid. Never considered the consequences of what I did. The sentence was harsh. Nearly 10 years of strife. It's a shame I threw away the best years of my life. Sacrificing a youth I will never reclaim It's a tough pill to swallow But I know who's to blame Looking up to the wrong people Thinking they were cool 
Guess the joke was on me for being a fool. Glamorizing a lifestyle based on deceit. Suffering loss is far greater than the bitter taste of defeat. Lying in the bed I made, reality quickly sets in. Praying to God for forgiveness of my defiance and sin. Looking forward to the future and overcoming my fears. Wondering, is there such thing as unanswerable prayers? Although time's running out, it is still on my side. I just want to be able to look back and say that I tried. Was it worth it? I doubt it. All I know is I've changed. For the worse, for the better. That's for God to arrange. Fed Poet Society, tell me what you think. Man, you got a moment. When they see you down, there's no...